very excited to be presenting to you guys our very first hurricane season outlook for the hurricane season of 2023. We're going to be jumping right into it, but you first off might be noticing that we're using new maps here. This is my second business I'm launching, TrilogyMaps.com, and I want to tell you guys all about it real quickly before we get into things. I am extremely excited to announce that I have launched my second business called Trilogy Maps. You can check it out at TrilogyMaps.com in the description and the pinned comment down below. We have gone ahead and created the highest definition and most customizable digital maps you can find anywhere here on the internet at an extremely affordable price as well, might I add. These maps are so customizable due to our very unique layering system that make it possible to basically create whatever map you like. I seriously wish this was around when I first got into weather because making weather maps that look extremely professional has never been this easy before. So if you want the highest definition, most customizable, and most professional looking weather maps that you can possibly make uh, for a very affordable price, go ahead and check out TrilogyMaps.com. And we're actually doing a 50% discount until May 1st, so be sure to grab these maps before May 1st because they will be doubling in price by that point. All right, now first things first, we're going to be talking about the different regions that you need to become familiar with. The Gulf of Mexico, obviously. Here in the blue, I'll draw it where it is. Obviously, you guys probably know where it is, but here is the Gulf of Mexico there in the blue. The East Coast is offshore of the East Coast here in the, in the red there. We can see that here is the Caribbean in the pink, and we actually have separated the Southern Caribbean. And the reason we do this is because the Southern Caribbean is actually a little bit desertous. I don't know if you guys knew that, but... The Caribbean, the Northern Caribbean, uh, take Jamaica, Puerto Rico, take that north and eastward or in westward, and that's basically going to be your more tropical Caribbean. South of those areas, though, is going to become a lot more arid and, and very, very dry. And this is not a good area for hurricanes or tropical cyclones at all. We call it a hurricane graveyard, matter of fact, because it takes out a lot of hurricanes when they get suppressed to the south like that. But here in the Northern Caribbean, we they obviously have a very excellent time developing. Uh, two more regions to learn about here. This cylindrical one in the green here is our MDR. That's short for Main Development Region. And this is where most tropical cyclones historically develop, move across this region, and then they move into uh, either the Southern Caribbean and usually die out the Caribbean and usually have an easy time. And from there, they might even move into uh, either the OTS, which is our next region, the Out to Sea region, or the uh, east coast here which would be number four and this is when we get those east coast threats as well so there's multiple different areas they can go to from the mdr but usually this is where they start out they would be typical to start out in those areas uh, if not they maybe start in the caribbean gulf of mexico or off of the east coast and we call these homegrown systems these were the ones that kind of start uh, out here in areas very close to the united states and this does happen oftentimes and when it does they can really intensify quickly uh, and actually become major hurricanes. They don't have to start out in the main development region. All right, now that we're done with that little disclaimer, let's move right into it. We're getting into the temperature anomalies, the sea surface temperatures and temperature anomalies. We can see they're slightly above average waters uh, in these areas in, in the orange here. This is where there's some warmer water in place currently. This could obviously change over time, but all we have to go based off of is what is currently happening. And we're going to continue to do this for the coming months, but we have warmer waters, which obviously helps out tropical development a lot. So that is something we really, really uh, tend to pay attention to here. Now, there is another area of those slightly above average waters, and that's going to be between South America and Africa here, uh, kind of south of your main development region, which kind of mostly goes right in between these two areas. Uh, this is another area that happens to be just above average right now. Now, we see even further above average waters actually here in the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, and off of the East Coast currently. We had a very warm winter, which kept these oceans much warmer near, near the coast of the United States than they typically would be because there was less Arctic air above them. So they're getting off to a much warmer start. Now, what happens over the course of the spring and summer may change this, but for now, this is what we're taking a look at here. Now, we do see there is another pretty far above average area, and that's uh, right here off of Africa, just to the south of our main development region. This shouldn't impact tropical devel development too much. These areas are pretty suppressed to the south, and unless they move, it's not really going to make too much of a difference, but I wanted to show everything that is happening out there. We do have an area of below average temperature waters, and that's going to be mostly here for this southern Caribbean area, which is going to make it even less favorable for development if it stays this way than it already is, because it already happens to be very dry, as I mentioned earlier. 
uh, let's just get into uh, our shear forecast because in an El Nino, which is what we're expecting to move into, uh, we can see that we get increased shear, which is very bad for tropical development, especially in our main development region and the Caribbean. Uh, we see this directly moving across from the Pacific over into the Atlantic from that El Nino Enso region. Uh, and that is going to hinder development. This is why I always tell you guys, and this is why this is a fact, El Ninos typically, not always, but typically feature less favorable conditions for tropical activity. And it's mostly due to this increased shear. On the contrary, a La Nina would look like this, decreased shear, uh, and overall more favorable conditions for development. Mostly shear just holds back development uh, in, in these cases. So a storm might be developing, but the shear can just eat a storm alive. So when there is that decreased shear, like in a La Nina, uh, typically there's nothing really stopping a storm from developing. There's nothing that's going to destroy a storm. Whereas in an El Nino, we might see that happen where a storm's developing, but over time uh, that increased shear especially it's going to be in pockets. You guys will see this later on in the year when I show it, but shear isn't usually just over the entire region. There's usually waves of it coming across. And when those tropical storms and, and depressions and cyclones overall hit those areas of increased shear, uh, they tend to just tear them apart. So here is our uh, favorability forecast, and this takes both of those things into consideration. This is our less favorable region. Most of the MDR is less favorable overall because of that increased shear. Uh, and really not that far above average temperatures in these areas, it's not going to be that favorable uh, is the current expectations. Now, as you can see, these more homegrown areas like up the East Coast, uh, directly from the Gulf into the Gulf Coast or heading into the Gulf from the Caribbean are going to be much more favorable. There's far above average temperatures in these areas. And also, uh, shear tends to play less of a role in these areas. Also, dry air isn't too much of a factor most times either. So I think that homegrown systems are going to be much more common and less of those long track MDR uh, events are going to be taking place is my current expectation. Uh, now, as we move on, we can see that there's even more favorable areas, even closer to the coast here. Uh, near Cuba and the Bahamas, and then for the Gulf of Mexico, it's a little bit more favorable than uh, Dominican Republic, Haiti, Jamaica, Puerto Rico. Those areas are a little bit less favorable than these red areas that I'm indicating here. Now, your overall hurricane season outlook, uh, the overall forecast here is going to look something like this. This is just my own words uh, and kind of how I see it at this point is less invest in tropical cyclones overall across the uh, main development region here is my expectation than what's typical. Uh, so we're going to see less of that activity. That also, uh, in my opinion, will lead towards less of these fish storms that go out to sea like this, because usually those storms start out in the main development region anyway. So that's going to overall lead towards less storms moving into these areas. Uh, but as we take a look at the Caribbean, we see above average development in this green area here. And this is due to those warmer temperatures, less shear impact uh, than, let's say, the main development region. Uh, and overall should be much more favorable uh, and one of the most favorable areas I expect this hurricane season. Let's say, for instance, hypothetically, there will obviously be some storms that come out of the main development region that do make it out. Let's say it's struggling, but it's making it through. It's hitting shear. It's very weak, but it does end up moving into this green area. We might see it rapidly intensify at that point. We have seen things like that happen before as well. It survives the unfavorable and eventually reaches the favorable. And at that point, that is when it is finally able to take shape and actually develop at that point. That is something we would definitely definitely be watching for and especially if it makes it across the Caribbean and let's say moves into the Gulf at that point it would be hitting even more favorable conditions uh, so this would be extremely favorable for tropical development and that would create a very dangerous situation uh, also we could see the same thing kind of makes its way through and then heads offshore of the east coast where things are more favorable uh, we could see anything move through here, hit anywhere along the coast. That could uh, be an above average chance this year, in my opinion. Um, and oftentimes, you, what you can see as well is these homegrown systems come from the Gulf and cross Florida and make their way up the coast. That is possible. Or just heading straight from the Caribbean, starting out there and moving into this area. There's multiple different possibilities here, but this is my thoughts overall on what I expect for the hurricane season. Now, this is our first of many outlooks is my expectations. 
So be sure to subscribe, be sure to tune in. We do upload every single day. We're gonna be making a lot of these long range forecasts this week. So be sure to hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Also leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you guys think, and I will see you guys in the next video.